Snowmobiles have gone through so many technological changes over the years from how they're cooled to how they're lubricated, suspensions, everything has changed so much over the years. I'm going to show you a few things in this building that have changed snowmobiling over the years. This is my second trip to the Polaris Barn. Last season when we covered it, it blew my mind over the amount of vintage and history that has been collected. I had to come back again and take a deeper look and try to find some more hidden gems in this barn. Yes, this barn has a phenomenal history of Polaris snowmobiles and enough parts that will make any restorer's jaw drop. But no, even after all the requests from everyone, I still can't give away its location. Let's first take a look on how sledding began. In the earliest days, snowmobiles were incredibly simplistic. Cooling the cylinders was a simple matter of moving air over the cylinder heads. Sometimes it was a matter of just putting the cylinder heads themselves exposed through the hood or incorporating a fan to blow air over the cylinder throughout the entire day. If you are moving with a free air, you are fine. The fan cooled work better if you are stop and go. Either way, it was a simple matter of air moving over the cylinder heads to keep the engine cool. In the mid-70s, the strive for more power meant a move to liquid cooling. To keep the power up, the engine had to stay cool, and the only way to do that was with liquid cooling. In 1976 to 1978, Polaris had to make the move from the TX to the TXL. The L stood for liquid cooling. During the 1970s, the technical development was happening at an exponential rate. The engines were now liquid cooled, they'd switched to Maikuni carbs, the problem was keeping that sled on the snow. So leaf springs were on the way out, independent front suspension was on the way in. From its infancy, snowmobiling was done in a free ride manner. There were no trails for these sleds, their owners rode them wherever there was snow. Local fields and forests were all places to ride in the 60s and 70s, but in the 80s, organized trail networks started to emerge. The trails allowed greater ranges to travel, but they created a new challenge. The roughness of those trails made traditional leaf spring suspensions a real challenge to ride, so the OEMs began to offer independent front suspensions on consumer sleds. My first snowmobile with IFS is sitting in the very back, the 340 Cross Country Indy. 